Hey, what's up, citizens of Rock City? Say what's up, everybody. Say what's up. Amen. Man, listen, I am so excited about all God is doing. Yes, I've given you the rest of the month off, but we are working hard to make sure we develop the best system, the best church, and the best process for helping you become all that God has called you to be. While we're working, I think it's, what time is it, y'all? It's 9.27 9 9 p.m. We are hard at work. We really believe 2020 is about to be big. Sit back and relax. This word is a word I went into, and I really believe if you take good notes, if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a clock. It shows you exactly how much time I have left. Take good notes. Make sure you give. Just because we're not having church doesn't mean you shouldn't give something toward what God is doing. I love you so much. Sit back and relax. This word is going to bless your life. All right, here we go. Are y'all ready? Let me ask this question first. Who's been enjoying the teaching? Anybody been enjoying the teaching? Man, hear me when I say this. I am a preacher by nature. I'm a preacher preacher. You know, I'm a slap your neighbor, high five and tell them God's getting. I like going to church, not church without the R, church. Um, but the Holy Spirit's been dealing with me on Michael in this season. People really need information, not so much celebration. And I want to give you something that you can take and make applicable to your everyday life. I mean that. I'm, I love when I see men look at me and be like, that's it right there. I want us to be all that God has called us to be. I told you and I made a vow, I made a promise that before this year is out, I'm going to do all I can as your pastor to make sure you know purpose, accept purpose, walk in purpose, and fulfill purpose. That's my goal, to know purpose, accept purpose, walk, walk in purpose, and fulfill purpose. All right, so what is my purpose, Pastor Mike? We talked about this about a week ago, and I would love it if you would go revisit that message. I gave you five purposes that God called you for. Number one, you were playing for God's pleasure. This was one of the most powerful statements I've made, and I had a member inbox me in. Um, I felt led to call them, and I FaceTimed them and called them. And what they said to me, man, with tears in their eyes, just blessed my life. Said, Pastor Mike, I'm going on my 40s, and my entire life I've been told I was a mistake, that I wasn't playing. The reason my father didn't raise me, it wasn't part of the plan. He moved away. My mom gave me away because she was too young. It, I wasn't playing. Said, when I was sitting in church and you said they didn't plan me, but God planned me, said 40 years of weight just came off of me. And I, and I want to suggest this to somebody in this room. You are not an accident. You are not an accident. And I want to say this to somebody who finds yourself in something that you didn't plan. Now, can we be honest? Who's ever lived in, in a way that life happened so fast you got caught up in something that wasn't a part of your plan? I'm going to see who can catch this. It wasn't on your radar, but God wasn't caught slipping. Now, I know, this ain't, uh, I know this ain't proper English, but forgive me. I grew up across the street, so I'm going to say it like where I come from. You can't catch God slipping. No, you may not have saw it, but God saw it. And he has a plan for your life. Number two, I was formed for God's family, which means formed. Somebody say formed. Formed. Crafted. I like that word. I was formed, which means if something is being formed, all I could think about, I like analogies. I like examples. Who can make some good peach cobbler? All right. Who can make a good, uh, what, what's that pie I had? Some sweet potato pie. All right. So don't mess me up. Sweet potato pie has a crust on it, right? All right, so what type of pie is it that you have to pinch the edges of the crust? That's apple pie. Okay, thank you, Mama, for holding me down right there. Apple pie. All right, so let me show you something. With that, with that sweet potato pie, the crust just needs to be in. But because the apple pie requires something different, the crust can't be smooth. You make sure you what? Form it. You missed what I just said. I'm trying to let you realize that the emptiness that you feel sometimes, the loneliness that you feel, is because when God formed you, he formed you with ridges that fellowship needs. Did you catch that? So if you feel like there's a part of you missing, when you be feeling like, man, I'm going through this by myself, that's not a wrong interpretation sometimes. It's because you're going through it with people who don't share the same faith as you. Did you catch what I just said? So I want to catch this. I was formed for God's family, which means I need to enjoy real fellowship. You're going to hear me talk about joining small groups, getting involved with different curriculum. We stayed up all last night, all day yesterday. I gave the staff off, and some of us just came to work all day, probably 10 hours, walking through 2020. And one of the big five that God gave me is something called City Life. 
city life. I have so many people who are just sitting at home with nothing to do positive. So I want even on our app in 2020, you're going to be able to see things. What's going on tonight? Here's a group going bowling. Here's a group going to the movies. Hey, we're reading this book. Hey, we're having a cooking class. I want to make sure that I am creating an atmosphere where we can have fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. They used to sing a song back in the old school days. None of my 20s or 30s or 40-somethings going to know this. You got to be an old school Baptist saint. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Lean in the everlasting arm. Listen to that song. What a fellowship. What a joy. Look at the joy that comes from the fellowship because in that fellowship, it teaches me how to lean. See, we so ready for God to lean in our direction. Look at your name and say, are you leaning in his? Uh, hear me. <laughs> are you leaning in his? So hear me when I say this, Pastor Mike. Somebody say fellowship. There was a woman with the issue of blood, and she had been bleeding for 12 long years. She had been in a fellowship with people who could not fix her condition. She hears that Jesus passing by. She goes out into the crowd. The Bible says she touched the H-E-M, the hem of his garment, yet she gets saved. She never touched Jesus. She touched what was in fellowship with Jesus. Y'all miss what I just said. She never touched his body. She touched something that was touching him. See, somebody in this room know people need to get close to you. Why? Because I'm close to him. And if you get in fellowship with the right people, it's a miracle that can happen. Why, PMJ? Because everything my daddy got, he put down inside of me. Fellowship. Number three, we learn discipleship discipleship that's rich ain't it we learn discipleship the, the the power of sitting at somebody's feet I, I love this I love it discipleship can be mirrored in a, in a, in a chiclet or a baby bird and a mama bird the mama bird on our deck right now is this nest that every year they come and I never throw it down because it blows me away because the eggs come she sits on it I want to pause for a minute because in the middle of discipleship, you have to prepare for a season of being set down, a season of being set there. They know it ain't your time to come forth. It's your time to be, to, to be developed. So what happens? She sits on that nest. She sits on the nest, but she builds the nest. This is critical. She builds the nest with thorns and sticks at the bottom that as long as the baby bird is a certain weight, it's comfortable. But when the baby bird gains more weight, it's the indication that it's time for you to get out. You miss what I just said. But watch this. When the baby bird is incapable of feeding itself, mama bird brings the bird food. See, discipleship is the process when, some, when you submit yourself long enough for someone to bring you what you need to become what you're going to be. Y'all miss what I just said right there. Number four, I was shaped for serving God. My fourth purpose is to practice real ministry. Number five, my fifth purpose is to live out real evangelism. I'm setting a goal and I'm praying about it. I'm going to push everybody in this room that I mean this. I want you to take this personal. You need to win 10 people to Jesus in 2020. You need to, you need to start making a list right now, baby girl. They, if you connected to me, you getting saved and you coming to my church. Y'all miss what I just said. No, you finna eat from where I eat. You finna get the love that I get. Because I want everything. Ain't nobody going to shout but the middle section. Forget the outside sections. I want everything connected to me as blessed as me. Am I preaching to anybody? You wouldn't have to worry about finding new friends if you got your current friends in line with God. Did you hear what I just said? Let's talk about it. This past week, I introduced something called Ikagagi. Ikagagi. Who caught that this week? Was that not good? Ikagagi, the Japanese concept meaning reason for being. Reason for being. Ikagagi. It is a Japanese concept that simply put means your reason for getting out the bed. It is your reason for getting out the bed. What have I discovered, Pastor Mike, that when you press snooze, a lot of you are pressing snooze not because you're tired, but because what you got to get up to ain't worth getting up for. Did you catch that? So what am I realizing, PMJ? Ika Gagi in the French, they call it your raison d'etre, your reason for being. Ika, Ika, however you choose to pronounce it. Ika, Ika means life. Gaia means value. It is your life value. All right, what's another definition? Ika, Ika means living. Gaia means usefulness. Usefulness. So it is your living usefulness. Your living usefulness. It is a process of discovery. I asked you four questions, Leslie. Four questions I asked you this week. I said, number one, what do you love? What am I good at? 
what does the world need and what can I be paid for? See, because what am I discovering? I'm teaching you on purpose, but what's the use in having purpose if you don't have passion? If purpose is the oil, passion is the gas. Preach PMJ. Passion is the gas. Hear me when I say that if purpose is the oil, passion is the gas. So I gave you these questions, and I'm going fast because I want to get to something else. I asked you three questions for each, okay? Put them up there. What do you love? I asked, what have you never got bored doing? Who was it here this weekend who needs this real fast, okay? I got you. Don't worry about it. So here it is. What have you never gotten bored doing? What have you never gotten bored doing? Number two. What's something you're always drawn back to? I'm going to find your passion. Because now that I know what God put me on earth for, the will of God is for me to do the will of God. My purpose, number one, is to be used by God. All right, what's my passion? That's what I need you at now. Now, your passion, this is good. Woo. This is good right here. Your purpose is all God's. God says, no, I'm, sorry, I'm selfish with your purpose. No, I put you here for a reason. Do my job first. But your passion, that's on you. Fall in love with your purpose, I light your passion on fire. Abort your purpose, your passion going to always run empty. Y'all miss what I just said. This is why a lot of us are chasing things we can't catch. You ain't got the oil for it. And the oil is your what? Purpose. So hear me. So you, you hype, you gassed up, but you ain't going nowhere. Or you can only go so far before you lock up or break down. It's because you need God's purpose. So what do I love? What is something I'm always drawn back to? Number three, what is something you get in the flow about? Make that make sense. What is the thing that if you start talking about it, researching it, or doing it, you will forget how much time done passed? Hear me, you start talking about this, you can't even, you, you'll look up and somebody say, man, what you doing? It's been six hours. You for real? Or you forget to eat or drink. What is that? Lady looked at me and texted me yesterday at about 5.45. said, what time are you coming home? I said, I'll be home in about an hour. She said, okay, cool. She texts back, what's your problem? I said, what you mean, what's my problem? You can't call nobody? I said, what you mean I can't call nobody? She said, it's 10 o'clock. I'm on the phone. In the me, hey, I'm so sorry, but I'm so, I ain't know. We started talking about vision, started talking about how we finna do stuff. We looked up and four hours passed. And it felt like 10 minutes. And I had to get on the phone and say, babe, you know how I get when we start talking vision. We start looking at pictures of stuff we did. Then we start reexamining how we can do stuff better. Then we start looking at how many people went to Pathway to Purpose. Then I start getting excited. Then I start, they start telling me we're running out of room for Children's Church in Forestdale. We need another one. I'm looking. I'm like, what else can we do? I looked up. I almost had to sleep on the couch because I got passionate. So what am I learning? Number two, what are you good at? What skills have you spent time practicing, developing? What do people look to you for? Is there something you desire to be good at? That's rich, ain't it? What, what do you spend time practicing and developing? What do people look to you for? What do you, is there anything you want to be good at? I'm going fast. Number three, and the link, this entire message is already on YouTube and on the app. All you got to do is click it. You can follow along. What can you get paid for? I receive that. I receive that. What have you been paid for before legally? <laughs> Somebody looked at me and said, I can get paid. <laughs> Number two, what would you be doing if you weren't on your current job? That's crazy, Annie Walt. Number three, this is so rich, I want to ask this question. What would you try if God guaranteed it wouldn't fail? That's crazy, ain't it? If God woke you up out your sleep and said, if you do this, I'm guaranteeing it's going to feed your family for the rest of your life and change your life, what would that thing be? That's crazy, ain't it, Walt? So let me say this to you. I need you to catch this. Number four, what does the world need? Now, I want you to do me a favor. Exchange the world for my world. You feel me? So many people trying to change the world and ain't even impacted their world. So, so I'm discovering that. So what do I realize, PMJ? I want to show you something called a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram, a Venn diagram. This Venn diagram kind of shows you where you should be. So whatever the thing is that keeps being common in all four of those categories, that's the place of your passion. What's the problem, PMJ? Five dreamers going to catch this. Your passion sometimes don't get you paid. Can I get a what, what from three people? Walt, if you can just work out 24-7 and that's all you do, 
Think about that, Walt. Walt is a bodybuilder, man. I'm telling you, man, when he goes to competitions, he's the truth, man. I know he is. But it's, I have one friend who's a golfer, and he said to me, he said, Mike, that's my passion. He said, the only problem is if you don't place in these tournaments, you don't get nothing. He said, so I don't have the time. I got kids. I got bills. I got insurances. I got car notes. I got student loans. I don't have the time to put into my passion. So what am I realizing, PMJ? How about we start getting on fire with God for our purpose and start leaning into our passions? So what do we see? What do I love? That's where my calling is. What is my strength? That's where my career should be. What, am I, what can I get paid for? That's a cause. What is my world need? That is my potential. I also talked about Abraham Maslow. Maslow, please go listen. Uh-oh, I tore it out my Bible. Please go listen to Maslow, this message this weekend. We talked about the hierarchy of needs, that there are three basic needs that every person tried their best to fulfill, three basic category needs. The first one are our basic needs, which are our physiological needs. The first thing we wake up in the morning is thinking about how we're going to eat, where we're going to sleep, what we're going to drink. Then we think about our safety. Are we safe and secure? Then we go to our psychological needs. Number three, we talk about a sense of belongingness. How are my relationships? How's my friendships? How am I, how's my marriage? Number four, we go to our esteem needs. We want to feel like we're accomplishing something. That's why so many people become stagnant. They don't feel like they're accomplishing something. The best thing for me, and I hope you can receive this is cleaning up I don't know if that makes sense to you I love when I sit on the couch and my wife will just bring a basket of clothes and say can you fold these for me I, I can't explain the sense of accomplishment I get when I look at the, 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 the bottom of the basket and all their little socks and stuff is lined up you got me? I be feeling like I accomplished something, you know? I, I wasn't raised as a man's man. My dad never taught me how to change a flat or, or check oil. He taught me how to love God. He, he was just, I, I just never learned what I call man's man stuff. You got me? So this week when the light bulbs and stuff went out, you know, I got my ladder. I changed the light bulbs out. Then I made sure her car had the oil in it and all that good stuff. Then I went and kind of did some other stuff around the house. One of the plates on the light switch was coming out. I went and got a screwdriver. And all I did was just kind of screwed it in just a little bit and I stood by and said, baby, I felt like I accomplished something. Y'all laughing, but I felt like I accomplished something. You want to know why you hate your job? Because you don't feel like you're accomplishing nothing. You feel like you're going there just to go there, just to pay bills. There's no sense of fulfillment. And most of the time, that's because we made decisions early that took us out our passion. Preach Mike McClure. Am I preaching to anybody in here, man? Hear me. So what do I want you to realize? That's what God is calling us to do. So what do I want you to realize? Let's keep moving really, really fast. Pastor Mike, can I change? Can I get there? What do I want you to realize is can a person change? Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 13, 23, can a leopard take away his spots? Can an Ethiopian change his skin color? The people of Judah were so engraved in sin. I'm going fast. They were so deep into their sin that God looked at them and said, Y'all will never change. So does God believe people can change? Yes. The only problem was they were, he knew their change would never last because they weren't using him. You can read all the self-help books you want. If God ain't at the source of it, you're going to go back to being what you were. Why, PMJ? I want you to catch this and put this in your notes. Radical change can't happen just because you want it. Radical change can't happen just because you want it. Here's a powerful statement that so many people tweeted and posted and hit me about right here. Most people are so trapped in their habits and behaviors that they begin each day chained to yesterday, doomed to repeat the same mistake again and again. That's rich, ain't it? Who's ever saw a dog tied to a tree? That dog is trapped and chained. I want to ask a, a trick question. What that dog going to do tomorrow? The same thing it did yesterday. And many of us don't realize when we say we want change, but nothing about our habits change, all we're doing is going in a circle. I'm different. No, you're not. You just want to be. So how do I change, PMJ? I said this this weekend, and I'm going really, really fast. I change. Change takes three things. Change takes time, effort, strategy. Change takes time, effort, and strategy. That's powerful. Somebody say time. 
All right, I want to say this. I had a member who's um, going through a 12-step program, and it, well, they've completed the 12-step program, and they're so excited. So they've been uh, clean for a long time now. And they told me, said, Pastor Mike, I'm just taking it one day, time, 12 steps, time, effort. What is 12 steps? Strategy. Can you put this in your notes for your pastor so I can sleep tonight, please? Anything that you want to change that you have been strategized about, you're doomed to repeat. <laughs> Pastor Mike, that was too much. Well, let me say it real simple. No strategy, no change. That's rich, ain't it? No strategy, no change. No strategy, no change. What some of the things, I love sharing my, 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 my wins and losses with you. We were going to do watch night here, right? We were going to do a 10 p.m. service here. Uh, we were going to call it the preview part two. Then I looked up and saw it's dark. The first time we came, it was light. And people were parking down the street everywhere. I didn't want my women walking in the dark down, these hall, out, down this street right here or this back street parked all over the place. People are getting snatched now. I, I care about you guys. Even the women who have city groups, we had deacons assigned to the city groups, whether you knew it or not, outside watching y'all cars and watching y'all go to the car, making sure everybody was all right. But I'm sitting here. I spoke out my mouth. I want to be debt free. You got me? I said, no, our church is going to be debt-free so we can be a blessing. You know, today is Giving Tuesday nationally, and I'm excited because we helped 126 students go to school because we're helping with tuition. That's crazy, ain't it? So hear me when I say that, man. So, so that's the stuff I want to do. That's the stuff I like doing, being a blessing, being there for you guys when you need us. So what did I realize? I stepped in. I, I told Tiffany yesterday, I said, no, we're going to move watch night. I'm going to do a 12 noon New Year's Eve service right here because some of my mothers don't need to be driving that late at night at 1 o'clock in the morning. You got me? So I'm going to do a 12 noon right here for y'all where we're going to have church. I'm going to have some lunch afterwards. We're going to fellowship, bring in the New Year together. I'm going to do a 7 p.m. in Forestdale and a 10 p.m. in Forestdale. And that way I can control all my parking. The men can make sure all the women get to the cars. We we can do everything we need to do, but I also realize I have a bad behavior I need to change that I say I want to change, but I don't change. What is that, Pastor Mike? Every time I say out my mouth I want to be debt-free, I plan an event. Y'all just missed what I said. I say out my mouth, hey, we finna be debt free, but then it's gonna cut, take us 3,000 to cut down the rest of the trees for more parking. We had to get construction lights to shine in the field because there's no lighting on the street for real. So we was gonna get five lights to shine this way, three lights to shine this way, two lights to shine this way. Then we was gonna have to rent another generator because there's no real power in there. And after the generator, we're gonna do, and I looked up, I said, devil, I see you. Although it was a good idea, does it line up with the strategy? Y'all miss what I just said, man. It is called strategy. It is called strategy. Do you hear what I'm saying now? So let me tell you real quick, and I can talk about that all. When I tell you I can talk about that right there all day, because if you really want to change, it's going to take some time, some effort, and some what? Somebody say strategy. Now, be honest with your pastor. Who got some stuff right now you need to change, and you sitting here laughing because I ain't put no plan around that. Ain't that crazy? I ain't put no plan. Now, who sees why the last thing you said you was going to do different didn't work? Because there wasn't no plan. No, you got to make sure you do that, man. I, I, I'm, I'm learning. Me and lady, we laugh so much, me and my staff, because we put strategy behind everything we say we want to change. You got me? Everything we say we want to change, we put strategy behind. Let's talk about this a little bit better. God's plan is not just to save us, but to change us. And Romans 12 and 2, Dre says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind by the renewing of your mind. Let's go to work. I want to give you something new today. I went fast. I want to get this to you, okay? Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. The believer is to be transformed. That's a beautiful word called metamufu. Beautiful Greek word called, <laughs> did I say it funny? Metamufu. Metamufu, what well, we get our American word, what? metamorphosis metamorphosis let's make that make sense pmj god says the greek word morph morph means means the real being of a man the real being of a man it is in the very nature and essence the inseparable part all right so what is a caterpillar a caterpillar is the temporary shell of the real being of a butterfly Y'all miss what I just said. A caterpillar let's ask this question i want to ask this question is a caterpillar a butterfly Yes, no, no, it's a caterpillar, but it can become a, so, 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 so what is a butterfly, PMJ? A butterfly is a caterpillar 
who let the process happen. I'm in the wrong church. Pastor Mike, what's a butterfly? Do I need to say that again? What's a butterfly? A butterfly is a caterpillar who said, God, do what you do. A butterfly is a caterpillar who said, I'm locked away in this cocoon. I'm lonely. I'm isolated. I don't know what's going on in the world, but if I got to stay in here, why? Because although I'm on my belly, I got some wings in my back. Y'all miss what I just said right there. And God sent me here to tell three people, tell everybody in your life, don't sweat the caterpillar, don't sweat the butterfly when you hate it on the caterpillar. There is a metamorphosis about to take place. Why? When you change your mind. So can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Who's ever seen a cocoon on the ground? You only see cocoons where? Which means the caterpillar had to make up in his mind, I'm not built for height. But if I want to live at a certain height, I got to crawl up. I want to suggest every person who's been crawling, don't let nobody tell you you're moving slow. Look at your name and say, I'm on my way up, baby. There's something in me that the devil's trying to keep out of me. But God said when I transform, he's getting ready to take me from glory to glory and from... Sit down. It's just 12 noon. Look. So let me, when I say this, what are the five areas we are seeking God about? Look at this. I need God. Be transformed by the renewing. See, the devil don't like that type of talk. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Five areas. Spiritual, physical, emotional, financial, mental. If you give God your mind in them five areas, everything will shift. Spiritual, physical, emotional, financial, and mental. Every year those five for me will be the same because to me those are the essence of who we are. Am I catching anything? It's the essence of who we are. When I tell you I'm kind of so bought into the new way I'm trying to live, I mean it's even people when we go out to eat now they laugh at me because even if I order let's just say a steak or something like that, I tell them in their lap, I say can you do me a favor, can you cut that in half before they bring it? I don't even want to see it because if I see it, I'm eat it. Am I making any sense? So, so I'm putting strategy around me now. I'm putting people around me to hold me accountable. I got an elder that every decision I make about people or something, Sean's going, he's back there in the back, Sean's going to check my motives on everything. And I told him to. I said, man, I need you to hold me accountable so and so. So even if something as small as bringing in a James Fortune or something as small as going to this side of town or something like, hey, we're going to put Pastor Hollis and so and so, he's going to be the one to call me and say, Pastor Mike, now, did you pray about that? All right, so what's, what's the reasoning behind it? You want to know why? Because anything done alone is illegal. I just messed y'all up. Anything done alone to me is illegal. Make that make sense, PMJ. If God didn't create us alone, why are you trying? He said, let us make man. Now, I'm going to show you something. He said, no, I'm going to throw this in the sky. It's good. I'm going to throw this up. No, I got the birds. I got the animals. I got this. But when it comes to who's going to run this, it's going to take all of us. Too many of you are making big decisions when you need. Y'all don't like me. Somebody say transformation. transformation. Being transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want to give you a couple things and we're going to go home right here. Okay, let's go this. Look what the NLT version says. Dre, give me my time. Do not copy the behavior, thank you, and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. I love the NLT version. And I have a Bible I just ordered. Before I tell you which one it is, I want to read it first. It's a new Bible. There's a new commentary out by Pastor Tony Evans. Well, I'm going to just say it. I'm just so proud of him. It's the only African-American commentary on the face of the planet. The first black man to ever have his own commentary. So I can't wait to order mine because I just love his revelation and just see. And I want to support him. But I love different translations. Now, let me be very clear when you read the Bible. There's a difference between a version and a translation. King James Version, NASB is a version. NLT Message Version is a translation. So a lot of times when you read translations, you get um, revelation from it. But too many times they leave certain words out trying too hard to make it uh, understandable. So always kind of know that when you're reading certain Bibles. Is that okay? But sometimes I like translations when I use translations because I want to make sure it speaks to you. So right here, look at what it says. It says, but let God transform you into a new person. How is he going to change me into, transform me into a new person? By changing the way you think. All right, so here it is. Back up what you've been saying, Pastor Mike. Then you will learn to know 
God's will for you. Did you see that? So let's talk about this. What's the first thing I have to do? Put this in your notes. And if I go too fast, I just really want to get this in because I won't be here next week because it's the last Tuesday of the year. All right. So here we go right here. You ready? Real quickly, let me give you a step to transformation. Number one, re-surrender. 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 That's a beautiful word. I beseech ye, I like the King James on this one, pray for me. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Look at the message version. Let's look at what it says. Watch this. Watch what it says. Message translation. Look what it says. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do. So look at what he says. When he says present your body a living sacrifice, what he's saying is do me a favor. Give God every aspect of your day. Give it to him. Before you go to sleep, God, I want to thank you for this rest you're giving me. God, I want to thank you for this job you're giving me. I want to say this. You can put this in your notice if you desire. How do I present myself a living sacrifice? How do I resurrender? It's when I say, God, there is no aspect of my life that is off limits to you. Off limits to you. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to write, write down. I want you to write this down. Don't say it out loud. What areas have you told God no in? What's off limits? So, God, I'm going to give you my prayer life, but not my pocketbook. Well, God, I'm going to give you my tithe, but you can't have this relationship. Show me an area he ain't in, and I'll show you that cycle. I got to go. I'm running out of time. Number two, I wish I had more time to talk about that. Number two, rejoice. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be where? In my mouth. Sometimes you have to praise God until it changes your mind. Y'all miss what I just said. Now, 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 Pastor Mike, I don't think that's real. I read somewhere in the Bible where it said put on a garment of praise for a spirit of what? Heaviness. So I want you to think about this. It said, no, when you're heavy, just shout. Or, or in other words, you too heavy to try to think your way out of this one. So I want you to do this. Praise him in it till it comes off you. Now, now here's what's crazy. He said put on a garment of praise for a spirit of what? Heaviness. So what I'm trying to get you to realize that when you go through this holiday season and sometimes you feel heavy, let's be real, I feel heavy sometimes when it's more I want to do for my parents and more I want to do for the people in my family and more I want to do for this and more I want to do for that. And we're thinking about now, we're realizing that as we get older, we not, we, me and lady said up this morning, we just tripped because it was like, man, we're getting older, but it's like we forgot our parents getting older too. It's almost like you're so focused on you getting older, you actually think they stop. But it's like they're getting older, they're slowing down a little more. And I'm like, okay, God, I really want to make sure my mama don't have to keep doing this. And I want to make sure they're at this level. And I want to make sure they got this. And sometimes we get heavy. So this morning, I just grabbed her and said, Father God, I thank you. I said, God, I thank you. And I literally sent her a song. And I said, this is all we're going to listen to this morning. And we listened to this song, man. Listen to this song. Ja'Kalen Carr, it's yours. If you want it, you can have it. It's yours. And all day I'm just doing my little shout. Even while I'm driving, I'm just doing. You ain't never fake shout in the car? Now, who got the best fake shout you ever seen? Because all you do is you feel. <laughs> but, but I felt better. Am I talking to anybody? I felt better. Better, hear me when I say this. You got to learn, number one, how to re-surrender. Number two, how to rejoice. Number three, how to remember. I'm going to say this. A lot of you are treating God like you don't know him. No. God has a track record. If he did it before, he can do it again. So hear me when I say this, man, Tiffany, man, I just, me and Tiffany, we got to have a unique relationship because she's our church CFO, so she's probably going to get fussed at the most. You got me? She the one who tell me to build. We got to build. I just can't stand seeing her face sometimes because I'll be having my joy. Like, it's going to be a blessed day that she walk in like, you got a minute to talk? Like, no. So, so, so she'll tell me sometimes, like, Pastor Mike, don't stress. Look, I'm, I'm telling you something, but don't stress. We got to get this for the school. Don't trip. Don't be screaming. Don't be hollering. Because sometimes my first reaction, I'm going to always be honest with my church. My first reaction is to go left. 
I'm trying to get better. It was like, hey, we got to do something at this school. Well, I'm going to get the money for that from too. But, but she looked at me one day and she said, look at me, look at me, look at me. She said, we didn't get mad. She didn't get mad. When we got here and they have heat, what happened? When we got here and they needed books, what happened? When we got here and they said the school wouldn't last six months, what happened? When we got here and we didn't know how we was going to put AC in the joint, what happened? If he did it. See, sometimes you need people in your life who can remind you of what God has already done for you. Am I talking to anybody? So hear me, that's why I thank God so many times for the people around me because I'm telling you, you need folk around you because let's, let's be honest, I have amnesia. Look at your name and say, you too. Don't be looking at him like that. Look at your name and say, you got MT. Mama, you ever have amnesia? You'll be sitting there complaining like, Lord, I don't know how much. Your kids had a good Christmas last year. Your kids had a good life last year. So what do you have to realize? Don't let the devil have your mind. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about in here. So hear me remember, number four, I'm going fast, reprogram. Reprogram. That's rich, ain't it? Reprogram. 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 Right now, my remote at home does not change. The, turn the volume down. Who's ever, who knows what I'm talking about? Now, I'm going to find out exactly how ghetto you are right here. Who got one remote for the channel and then one remote for the volume? Throw your hand. Look at my church, boy. But hear me. And the reason is we had, a, we had to put a new TV in. Like, we got a TV about seven months ago. We put TV in, but we never changed it. Like, change it over. So, hear me. Oh, my God. Miles lost the volume remote. Okay? I don't know where the volume. So, every time I want to change the channel, I have to do this. Turn that volume. So, I set up last night. I went on Google. And I figured out, okay, it's an element TV. So, element. So, and so, so, okay. I up, 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 up. Down, down. Up, up, power. Down. Up, 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 up. up. Hey! Hey! Got the volume. That sense of accomplishment, you saw that? That sense of accomplishment. But now I'm sitting there this morning cutting the volume up, cutting the volume down. I'm finna free you real quick. I'm finna free you. I'm finna free, 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 free you. The remote was capable. So let me feel you, because I was lazy, I was delimiting what was in the remote. So the remote probably sitting on the counter like, why he won't let me be all that I can be if he just take the time and reprogram me. I'm finna say this. Why do I need church? Because I need to be reprogrammed. I grew up in a family where it was okay to let all your bills get behind. I grew up in a family where it was okay sometime to go through certain. I grew up in a family where it didn't really, all the men on a certain side of my family was alcoholics. That was normal. No McClure man has not died from liver poisoning yet. My dad and my two uncles are trying to be the first generation of McClure men not to be alcoholics. Think about that. Every McClure man prior to my dad and my two uncles have died from some form of alcohol. We had to reprogram. Y'all don't hear me. Hear me, Jesus. So how do I do that? Face the facts but keep the faith. Now, I want to say this. I, I, don't, I only got two minutes left. You can play softly, right? I got to get in my Two minutes left, okay? For many of you, if you don't open your mouth and start talking to God, you're making, I don't want to say you're making his job difficult because he don't need you to do what he needs to do. But prayer, there are certain things heaven won't do until you ask for it. Did you catch that? There are certain things heaven won't do until you ask for it. I want, you to, I want, to, I want to ask you this question. Answer this. When you go to the hospital, call heaven. Is God for you a doctor or a vet? Is he a doctor or a veterinarian? Make that make sense, PMJ. I tell a doctor what I think wrong. A vet have to figure it out. No, so, so if I take Max to the vet, all, Max can't say, yeah, I ate something I shouldn't have ate and I feel like it's stuck in my stomach. No, Max got sick about a year ago. He was almost about to die. He was fading, my dog. And literally, I took him to the vet. He was in the vet for almost a week and a half. They didn't know what was wrong. Well, many of you are going to laugh when I say this. Uh, Walmart sell wood. Y'all know that little wood that be outside of Walmart. I was like, I'm going to get some little wood from a little fireplace. I got a little fire pit. And every year, the boy, me and my boy sit in the backyard around the pit. I call it the man thing. And I posted it. Well, it was Miles' first year in that circle. All right, so I sat there and I put the little wood out and I set it on fire and we sit there and we get the little marshmallows and we just sit there and have daddy talk, okay? Well, I put the fire out. 
some kind of way Max started chewing on the wood, it wouldn't digest. It gets stuck in his stomach, and not, it, it was bad. So he was like, we don't know what it is. They kept checking him, checking him, checking him. Finally, they said, hey, we had to put a dye in him, put him to sleep, x-rayed it. We saw the dye, and I still got it to this day. Little piece of wood he chewed. Little piece of wood. I said, so you mean to tell me my dive dog almost died because he ate some woods? Like, yes, sir. They said, here's the scared part. He probably only had another day to figure that out. Then he said to me, I never forget, he said, you know, that's the difficulty with animals. They can't tell us. Can I ask you a question? Why would he say make your request made known? <laughs> Y'all don't hear me in here. Why would he say make your request made known? If he don't want you to say it. Let's keep rolling. Let's go. So number one, I got to reprogram. Somebody say reprogram. Number five. I'm sorry. Number one, it was resurrender. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, replace. I'm going really fast. Since you have, I'm going to go to the message version. But that's no life for you. You learn Christ. My assumption is that you pay careful attention to him. Been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, I do mean everything connected with that old way of life has to go. Replace it. Replace it. Ask yourself now, what do I need to replace? This is why I'm working on something called city life. Because I can't tell my singles to come out the world, but I don't have nothing for them. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to look at you and say, I'm going to look at you and say, hey, you shouldn't be in sermon in place. You couldn't do so and so, so and so. Now you're just sitting at home like, but now what? Because truth be told, Pastor Mike, you go home to somebody. Is that not fair? That's the truth. So what am I realizing now? Even, even with every real mama, give me a what, what? You didn't just take the baby bottle. You exchanged the bottle with a sippy cup. Then you took the sippy cup and gave him a what? Cup. Did you catch that? You didn't just take the pacifier out of that mouth. You went from a soft nipple to a harder nipple. Then, then all of a sudden now, he gets like a teething ring. Then you just take it completely and you got to deal with them nights of crying. What am I suggesting to you? Many of you, the reason you keep going backwards is because you're not replacing. Did you catch that? So let me free you real quickly, free you real quickly. What are you going to do with that time that you used to do X, Y, Z? Give that time to God. Give that circle to God. Give it to God. Number six, reconcile. Reconcile means to bring it to agreement, harmony, make compatible and consistent. It means to check a financial account against another for accuracy. Reconcile your account. Start seeing what doesn't line up in your life. You got me? Start seeing. Many of you are going to realize who and what should go when you start reconciling. In a sense, start looking at the timing in which stuff fell apart and the timing in which people showed up. Check them accounts. Check your receipts. Number seven, recharge. That's why you come to Bible. I'm so happy to see all y'all today, which means you could have been coming. <laughs> I'm so glad to see y'all in here today. So let me tell you this. Put in your calendar now. I'm a very realistic pastor. Put in your calendar now. You know, twice a month, I'm going to try to make 12 No, I need the recharge. You catch what I'm saying? And last but not least, let's go home. <laughs> Restore. I know your deeds that need the, and your toil of perseverance and that you cannot tolerate evil men and you put to the test whoever calls the apostles. They are not. And you found them to be false. And you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Wow. You have left first love so what I'm telling you restore that relationship like an old car put some time in put some effort in put some strategy in and bring it back to life bring it back to life I told a couple this weekend I'm going to stop I said y'all marriage isn't dead it just needs to be restored I said now nah, listen to what both of y'all said neither one of y'all got no real legitimate gripe y'all just stuck so do me a favor what's the strategy and God said what's the strategy What's the strategy? What's the strategy? Even today, two days later, it's just literally like, man, it's been the best two days. We made a decision. As soon as we wake up, nobody touched their phone first till we talk to each other. You got me? So what we're trying to do is not make sure we leave out the house at the same time. It's like I was laughing. The walk to the car was funny. Because I hear the... <laughs> 
till I hit her with the TV. Have a good day, baby. I said, the TV, you know on TV that they leave out at the same time? But it's weird. Like he, One brother told me, he said, I've never seen a couple sit down at dinner at the same table. Where I grew up, my dad sat in one room. She sat somewhere else, talked on the phone. They said, so one of the things we did strategy-wise is three times a week, we're going to make sure we sit at the table and eat. No phones, no technology. And the talk. What I want to suggest to many of you in this room is that you're trying to throw away what could possibly be restored. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you give us the desires of our hearts, that we learn to think new thoughts so that we surrender our lives to you. I thank you for an incredible 2019. And God, I ask you for a renewed mind in 2020. Because God, I'm just crazy enough to believe if I change my habits and my mind, you got the power. You're just waiting on me to get in your will. So I thank you in advance in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Clap your hands, Rock City.